massive, massive thank you to all of them. All of them, you see me? Because me, me, I can, me, me could never have, have, me could never have done it without, without them. Me can never. And for any of you lot that don't understand Patois, I basically just said I couldn't have done it without them. <laughs> Obviously, you guys will notice that there wasn't an episode last week um, because your baby girl was doing bits. I was doing bits. I was at the Clean and Tidy Home Show and I'd been telling you guys about the Clean and Tidy Home Show for weeks, <laughs> leading up like next week and in two weeks time. And I was so excited. And the Clean and Tidy Home Show was more than my expectations were ready for. It was everything that I was excited about and more. And I'm so excited to just kind of de delve in and talk to you guys about it. And that's mostly going to be, the, the episode is mostly going to be, you know, about the Clean and Tidy Home Show, but also what I learned, uh, at, what I learned at the Clean and Tidy Home Show, because um, everything is about what I learn. Every week, every week is about what I learn. So if this is your first time coming to the So Flippin' Extra podcast, you've got weeks, <laughs> you've got over 52 weeks of, of learning. <laughs> Um, and it's all over the place and it's amazing and there's a child about to come in when I'm doing my podcast episode what is it I'm not even joking look you're ruining in it you can't you can't honestly you're gonna wait you're gonna wait 20 minutes yeah okay then you're not but that's I don't know go run go chase your tail please don't let me say it again close the door because you're wasting my time love you bye <laughs> yeah so what was I saying I don't know what I was saying but let's just start jumping let me start the. let me do the intro let's let's change the trajectory I'm not hey Google hey Google fine don't talk to me then let's get into the intro hi guys welcome to another episode of the so flipping extra podcast a platform for me to express explore and connect and be so flipping extra why i hear you ask well uh that's what brings me joy <laughs> so without further ado let's get into the podcast because i'm gonna take you down memory lane memory lane and you're gonna feel my pain. Anyway, last week, Saturday and Sunday, which was the 19th and 20th of October, was the Clean and Tidy Home Show. I keep forgetting that we're actually in October. I actually, do you know what? It's like time is moving so fast and I feel like I'm faster. So I keep thinking we're actually in November. I literally keep thinking we're in November. Like I keep thinking next week is December. It's, it's wild, it's wild, whatever. But anyway, so last week was the Clean and Tidy Home Show. And do you know what? What I learned about myself last weekend was that I'm amazing. No, sorry, I knew that already. <laughs> I knew that already. But it wasn't even that. It wasn't that I'm amazing. I, I am. I am, obviously. We all are, if you want. It's up to you. No, I'm joking. We all are. We all are. We need to keep saying that to ourselves more often because for as many times as we want to say we're amazing, there'll be someone that you'll say that to and they'll be like, calm down. Why? Why should I calm down? If I think I'm amazing, that's all that matters. All that matters is you think you're amazing. It actually doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. You can give yourself all the accolades. You can say all the nicest things about you and it doesn't matter. The moment you say, oh, I'm so, I'm so ugly. Oh, no, you're not. But you didn't want to agree with me when I was amazing. We're quick to allow people to say more negative things about themselves and, and stop them before we allow them to say positive things about ourselves. And not all the time. Like I said, I say this all, all the time. I said it last week. Find your tribe and you'll be cool. You can say all the positive things about you. And I remember when I, sorry, I've gone off on a tangent and I'm going to jump back in. I'm going to jump in on, the, on the, uh, the right stop soon. But I remember when I would say things like that around certain people, like, oh, I'm just amazing. And, th and then people would affirm it. And I'd be like, it's like I'm waiting for them to say, all right, big head, or all right, calm down. And even if we say that as a joke, don't. Because I've been, I know I've done it myself and genuinely, because I'm the first one to say I'm fucking awesome. 
And so, like, and sometimes you want to just kind of be like, all right, back down to earth. No, fly as fucking high as you want and say all the good things about you. Because not every day we feel like that. Not every day we do feel amazing. So when you feel amazing, do the most. Do the most. 100% have lost my trailer for of what I was saying before. Okay, I'm amazing and why? I had three of my friends come down last week to help me out at the Clean and Tidy Home Show. And honestly, I had no intentions that they were coming down to help me help me out. I just thought they were coming just to, you know, just to support me. Just, But support in the sense of, hi, I'm here. I see you, you see me. I'm going to get a couple videos. I'm going to send them to you. You're amazing. I'm just here so that you know you're supported. But I got so much more than that from each and every one of them that came. So I want to literally do a massive, massive thank you, a huge, massive thank you to Narinda, Johnny and David, because they came down and they done more for me than I even expected them to do. Like the three of them together was like, I felt like I was there to do one job. And I was able to do that job because everything else in the background was taken care of. So just so that you, got, you guys understand, I was at the Clean and Tidy Home Show and my role there is to be the host, the host, okay, just so you understand, of this extra stage. Now, the extra stage is a stage, a stage, all chairs in front. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I think like maybe 10 or 10 um, benches on each side. So 10 rows of benches. There could have been less, but whatever. You know, you're like, oh, there's 10, there was lights. Um, on each side, I have my stage manager who just makes sure everything's in line. We have our, what are they called? The engineer. That's my, that's, the, that's my crew. They're making sure everything's working. People can hear us. Like, I'm not, not knowing little ibby dibby stuff. Like, I've got a whole stage, the extra stage, named after me, named after my brand. Like, let's not get it twisted. Let's not get it twisted up in this chair right now. So, I'm the host of the extra stage. That's my role. Go down there. Every year, they'll ask me, do I want to have a stand as well? So, in my stand, I can, you know, bring my differ stuff and, you know, showcase my brand, showcase my collection, my clothes, all of that good stuff. So, I was like, yeah, it makes sense to have my stall as well because also what that does it gives me a place to go like if I kind of want a quiet moment you know just kind of go in the corner and face the wall because everything is there's a lot happening I got that place to go although there's always someone in there admiring my work so which is always nice as well so yeah we had the stall on the Friday I went down there and Johnny came with me and helped me and honestly could not have that Thing would that the smoothness of how everything went on Friday would not have happened if it wasn't for Johnny because one by the time I got down there and it took so long to get down to the XL from where we were because of the traffic we only had like half an hour and I know the way I am I would have froze I would have got in there and I just would have froze because I'd be like I don't know what I'm doing I don't know what to do I don't know where to start there's a lot going on and then in my head I would have been like just do it tomorrow just do it tomorrow and he was like come on Danny I'm here use me so we put all the stuff together and just started moving stuff. And it was like, oh, let's do this. It was one of those two heads are better than one one moment. And it was just perfect. And then before we left, there was a couple of little things that would have needed to get done the next day. But I wasn't stressing. And I tell you this for nothing. I would have stressed. If I'd done it on my own, I would have left there within that half an hour of trying to set up. And I would have been so stressed knowing that I only had a couple of hours to rest. And my head, I would have dreamt about it. That night in the hotel, I, dre- I I slept so lovely. I slept soundly. I, I, I slept knowing that everything was done. And I slept knowing that even if I went back over to Excel and I had no time to fix anything, everything was fine. It, oh, it was amazing. It was beautiful. And then, so on the Saturday now, I think David was the first one to come. He came as soon as he came out his camera out. He was my social media camera hype man. Like, Give this guy an award for the best hype man because he he does it. He did it. I never, last year I hired a photographer. I didn't hire one this year. And everything I needed was there. Like I, like the, all the professional pictures, they have a, a bunch of professional photographers um, that come around anyway. But it's the behind the scenes. Like I love the behind the scenes because they're just raw and authentic. They're the true essence of what you're doing when, 
the real cameras not on you because trust me I'm a poser I see the camera I see when they <laughs> when the camera people walk past and I'm like there in mid interview I'm like oh camera's there yeah, I see the camera. So, but when it's like catching like the little behind the scenes videos of me stuffing my face or taking a sip of a little Prosecco, that's like the stuff that you don't usually get, like you're not able to get. So, oh man, I was just so grateful for, for having that. And, and the Rinda, she's just my beautiful ball of goddess energy. She's the calm, she's just a calm energy. She's like, right, what do you need? How is everything? Da, 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 da. Like it was just she and because obviously Narinda's the organizer as well. Um, she was able to come. She made the table look nice and just yeah, like I said, was my was my calm was I was I didn't have to tell anyone to do anything. They just stepped in and they just done it. And I appreciated that. And I am the person. I don't know how to ask for help. I'm not good at asking for help. I'm not good at asking people. Uh, for what I need and I don't know I, I saw something about Virgos the other day it's like Virgos are mind readers so we expect you to be mind readers <laughs> um, it's not even that I expect anyone to be a mind reader and know what I need I'm just just not really good at asking for help so to, uh, to know that these three just kind of knew what I needed they might not even know that they knew what I needed they just stepped in and did what they did and what they do it filled my heart. I was so full. Like by the end of the weekend, I felt full of love. I felt seen. I felt appreciated. I felt, I just felt magnificent. And definitely a lot of that goes to, to them just being, just being on my team. Like it was, it was great just to say, oh, my team, because I feel like, you know, no, I don't want to say like I've never had a team before, but it was just like, oh, my friends have just come and yeah, they're just going to help me. But it was, I don't know, for some reason on Saturday, it just felt really different. Like everyone had a role and I never gave them their roles, but everything just fell into place. You know, like them games you have at the slot machines and you pop it in and it goes doop, 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 and it just goes to where it needs to go. And sometimes it goes to the wrong place, but they all just fell perfectly. They all fell perfectly and it meant that everything could just, happen the way it was supposed to happen so massive massive thank you to all of them all of them you see me because me, me i can me, me could never have have me could never have done it without without them me can never and for any of you lot that don't understand patois i basically just said i couldn't have done it without them other than that Listen, Penny set up a bunch of interviews, which was amazing. The the people over, because it was two, I did say this, it was obviously Saturday, Sunday, both days of just doing interviews. And I had some amazing interviews that, do you know what? Okay, do you know what it is? The great thing with the Clean and Tidy Home Show is there are a bunch of brands there. A bunch of cleaning brands candle brands this like just so much so much so much obviously it's a clean and tidy home show so all the brands are there and the great thing is is that you have some of these really big brands that are just giving out products and come on we all got to clean our house we all got to clean at some point so it's nice to get free gifts and all of that and free stuff and the thing with being on the stage all day is that I don't get a chance to go around to these brands and even if I have like a half an hour break I don't get a chance to go around to these brands because in that half an hour I need to have maybe something to eat or I need to have some water or I'm kind of setting up for the next person or because I have to stand someone wants to talk to me which like I said all of that is amazing and I love I love being there and by Sunday I was just like I don't care like I don't care I got, I did get, trust me, I got some stuff. Like I even got invited, to, a personal invite to the Dr. Beckman boat party. And trust me, the bags were goodying. The goodie bags were goodying. <laughs> so I got, I got some good stuff. No, no, it's all right. It's all right. I got some good stuff. But I didn't get to, but what I got, I didn't get to go around to the brands, but what I got was way more beneficial for me than being pumped with a whole bunch of cleaning products because all the conversations that I was able to have with with these amazing people on the extra stage just filled me with 
information, filled me with knowledge, filled me with other words that are really, you know, connected with and thesaurusing with knowledge. Like I was given so much more. So it was great because what I would do, like if I was at an event like that and I had all free reign to go and get a hundred goodie bags and come home with a hundred cleaning products, I would have. I, honestly, I would have. My bags would be full to the brim. The first, the first year that I was there, I probably had the most, the most goodie bags. I was like, oh, I can get this and this and this and this. And the first year, I never had the extra stage. Last year and this year was the the extra. We've had the extra stage that I've been hosting. And so, you can't buy those kind of conversations, and you can't always come by them conversations. Everyone's busy. People have got stuff to do. Some of these people that I had conversations with, like just to have a one on one with them or or, you know, have a not a meeting or, you know, something like that with them. You've got to pay money. So and I got to have these these conversations with everybody to open up my mind, to think about things differently. Like speaking with Charlie about the toxins in the home. That's not a conversation that I feel like I would have had anytime soon and what's great about it is that I can listen to these conversations and if it's not even something that directly affects me where toxins in the home do but the effects of that she had with the toxins in the home that affects someone very very close to me like similar symptoms so now I get to have an extra conversation with that person and say hey hun have you thought about this I would not have had that so as much as me learning from it and me getting something from it I get to give that to someone else as well that is close to me and that you know, I might be able to save someone's life. Okay, do be an extra, but I might be able to save someone's life. So, you know, um, conversations about menopause, which is a, a stage in my life that I'm at right now, perimenopause, that I feel like it's something that is affecting me. So, you know, how to deal with it. Obviously, baby girl's a gym girly now. Like I said, I talk about gym every week. Every single week we're talking about gym. Because just knowing that I'm, as much as I feel like I'm just doing gym for vanity because I want to look good when I'm 50, I'm not going to lie. I want to look like the hottest granny when I'm 50. By, by the time I'm 50, K would be quick maths. My quick maths isn't quicking. Okay, let's do the maths together. If I'm 42 now, by the time I'm 50, and I'm 42, Caden's 18. By the time I'm 50 which is in eight years' time, he will be 18 plus eight. Yeah? Thirty? No. Whatever in it. Whatever. It's early. It's not. It's 11. It's friggin' 12. <laughs> but anyways, um, you know, could possibly be a granny by then. I want to be the hottest granny. So, yeah, but as much as I feel like I'm doing it for that reason, it's deeper than that. Like even the weight training, like I don't do cardio. And what do you know? Cardio is not even good for you. So all of you lot, all you lot 40 year olds that are out there running and thinking I'm running, I'm going for my walks and stuff and I'm just putting on mad weight. The car, I'm not even gonna lie, I can't remember all the scientific, you know, mumbo jumbo, but cardio is not good for you. It makes you hold weight. Uh, for whatever reason and all of this stuff just go go you go research it because I you know I got my tea and yeah so the weight weight training is good for us for so many reasons as we're getting older as well as you know keeping our body allowing our body to be stronger so that when we do get older and we're more prone to you know falling over and stuff like that which is also another thing that can come with the menopause where our body's stronger and if we fall over we might be able to help ourselves a lot better like not get as many injuries also learn that as well as hot flushes you can get cold flushes if i right just had to change the camera so if it looks a little bit different that's why but yeah if i end up getting cold cold flushes i think i will cry because i hate the cold I hate the cold. I'd rather be my skin glowing and, um, I don't know, just having that sticky face, dewy look because I'm sweating my balls off, then I'm freezing. I'm just getting a cold flush. Nah, you're mad. You're mad. I, I, I just wouldn't be able to deal with that. Obviously, I would deal with it. Um, so, yeah, amazing conversations. We had Humble Penny talking about money management and investing. 
Oh, when I talk, I really I should have counted how many conversations, how many interviews I've done. But yeah, so many. And it's like every time I'm like, oh, yeah. And I had this interview and oh, yeah, we spoke about this. But everyone was just amazing. Everyone has such an amazing tell to tell. And i done an interview at the end and it was like, why should people come to the Clean and Tidy Home Show? Um, even as a speaker, it's like, you have a story to tell. You have a story that you might think is nothing to you, but to someone else, it is absolutely amazing. To someone else, your story could change the way they look at stuff, change the way their day starts, change the way their day ends, change the way they feel about themselves. And so I just feel like it's important for you to one, come and experience the Clean and Tidy Home Show just to understand what the big deal is because we do make a big deal of it and it is a frigging big deal. Best home show that I am fortunate to be part of. And yeah, like if you started something and how you started, like just just your journey in general can really inspire someone just to do theirs. Like you just never know. You just never know. And the feedback I got from my my friends, it, it was two two guys that came, David and Johnny that come. It's not something that they would really, really go to as men. But they was like, there was something for everyone. Like, and even David said that, he just didn't know what to expect. He was just coming to, to just coming to support me, and yeah, it was better than he even imagined. So yeah, it's amazing, absolutely amazing. And so another thing that I done was I do a demo on the demo stage, and I love doing demos on the demo stage because I remember the first year I done a demo. What was I doing? Oh, I had done a no sew upcycle. So I done an upcycle out of a t-shirt, and it was just fun and lighthearted, but I remember just feeling really nervous. This And this was the one, the three years ago. But this year, when I tell you, and I, I think this is what I love about myself and this is what they love about me. I don't over-prepare and I don't over-plan. And yeah, that could go against me, but it's actually part of my ethos. It's actually part of my authenticity. It's just that, let's just do it. How can I practice and prepare something that I do every single day? Like, I know it like the back of my hand. I use this stuff every day. So this this year, my demo was on your repair kit. So what you can have, like building your repair kit at home. So whether it's a sewn repair kit or no sew repair kit, just what I would have in my repair kit. And I went, I remember I went to chat GPT a couple of weeks ago because I was like, okay, what, what is it? I didn't even look at the list because I was like, stop. Stop acting like you need help to do things that you've been doing. Like you've been doing this. If someone called me up right now and said, Dan, I need blah, 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 something to do with sewing or whatever, I've got the answers. Like, and I've got my answers. I've got my self-taught answers. I've got what's, what's worked for me. This is what worked for me. This is also what you could do that I haven't done, but it's something that could work for you. Or, you know, here's my advice. So stop acting. Sometimes we, it's like we keep going for, oh no, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. And Well, maybe I do you've got this and (laughs) the demo was absolutely amazing we obviously you guys know that I think I'm funny do you if you if you didn't know that by now I don't know where you've been so I and sometimes I have dreams that I'm on stage doing my comedy skit in front of like an auditorium of people so I definitely think I'm funny and I use every opportunity I can to make people laugh because I just like making people smile and making people feel good and making people laughing so I did not disappoint the demo stage. They didn't know. They did not know what they was in for. <laughs> we was laughing. We was having fun. We and we was playing. We was being playful. We was, you know, I was walking up and down the little runway walk like, you. Can't, no one puts baby in the corner. And no one keeps baby behind the counter. <laughs> like I'ma come in front of that counter and I'ma show you like what's happening. Like I, at the one point I was like, oh, we can do stuff with this string. And I was like, oh, what can we do with this string? I ended up tying it around my my leg and just being like look you can make your shoes that don't have a strap have a strap and make give it a fun thing like a fun little feature and people are like oh my god come let me see some they're walking down the aisle trying <laughs> showing my shoe and Johnny was recording it for me and he was busting up in the video you can just hear him laughing and the man behind him is laughing the man's like oh okay I'm gonna need a lot of strength <laughs> literally oh man literally after the um after the session we walked away back to over to my stage I had to get back onto the extra stage and we were 
busted up. We were absolutely howling of how much fun that was. And then by the time we got back to the extra stage, David had just come. And then he was like, oh, no. He was so upset that he missed it because it was a frigging movie. I'm not even going to lie. It was an absolute movie. Um, I had so much fun. Every every element of the Clean and Tidy Home Show was just so much fun. And, um, yeah, Marie Kondo was there. I'd never got to meet her because, obviously, I was I was hosting the most in on the extra stage. And Stacey Solomon was there. But I met Stacey Solomon uh, on the first year. So it would have been lovely to meet her again as well because she was such, she's got such a beautiful energy. So it would have been nice to meet her again. But also it would have been like fighting through rubble to get to her because everyone's like, me, I want a picture, I want a picture. So it'd be like, mm, mm, mm. hi Stace, how you doing, babe? So yeah, maybe next time, maybe next year. Um... I love dressing up. I got to wear my outfits. I got to wear my shoes, um, which was amazing. Got Can you see the denim pair behind me? I can see my reflection in the mirror behind. But yeah, my denim pairs are there. So I wore both my denim shoes. And then on Sunday evening, like I done a, had a little Mariah Carey moment and was like, right, I've got to go change because I'm doing the award show. So a couple of weeks ago, Penny was like, how would you like to host the award ceremony with Georgina? Sorry, what? absolutely I want to do it sign me up sign me up right now so yeah literally that happened that was amazing we had the script literally got the script five minutes before okay maybe 10 maybe 15 even so before we went on stage got the script and I was like I don't, I don't understand what's going on I couldn't even couldn't even pronounce some of the some of the brands so I'm really sorry no okay Johnny said stop saying sorry but yeah I annihilated some of their names but do you know what I made it part like I said you guys know every week I don't I'm not perfect I can barely even read sometimes <laughs> like <laughs> I, I, I use words that I don't know the correct pronunciation or the correct meaning but it sounds good so we as as we were so at one point I got to the first name and I was like yeah I'm not even gonna lie I don't even know how to pronounce this. The the a CV, they're standing right there. And I'm like, and everyone in the audience is like, a CV. I'm like, who? They're like, a CV. I was like, okay, yeah, a CV. <laughs> they're up for an award. Um, but yeah, like make it part. Make make your um your flaws. Is it a flaw that I can't read? I I can read, I'm a very good reader. But you know. I just didn't, I just didn't know the word. I just didn't know the name. And, and I think because I was like nervous as well that I was like, ah, I don't even, I don't want to look like I can't read. And just sat, sitting here trying to pronounce it in my head. So let me just ask you a lot for help, but make it part of, make it part of the, part of the journey. Make it part of the act. Make it part of the performance. I make it part of my performance. And it's not, I'm not lying. I'm not pretending that I can't, I, I can't read it. Or I'm not pretending that I can't pronounce it so to get a laugh. I just can't. So instead of sitting there feeling shit about myself or feeling bad, like, oh, everyone's going to think I'm an idiot. Hey, help me. I don't know how to pronounce it. And that's just what I do. And I think over the last couple years of being, having the fortunate opportunities to speak on stages and speak to people and, you know, be on panels and be a speaker... I love that I've come to this place where I I give way less shit. I don't want to I don't want to say I don't care cuz we all care even even if we don't care we care a little bit. But I give so so way less shits, man. Like there are so many more important things in life than can I pronounce a cleaner product. If you've only seen something for the first time, you're not always going to get it right. People will see my name written down and, and not be sure how, but not everyone's going to say Dawkins on the first time. So, and if someone had to write my name, trust me, a lot of the time they're going to write D-O-R-K-I-N-S, maybe even with a G. So, you know, but it's obviously when you know, you know, and then you try. We always just try and try and do our best and, you know, all of that stuff. So, yeah, I had the best time. And... Just the affirmative thing about it is, as much as I'm saying to you guys, I I fumbled, I fumbled words. Um, I kept saying recommendation instead of con con com, 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 oh, what was it commemorative, 
accommodative award. I don't know. I can't even remember. But I kept saying it wrong. And at one point, Georgina was like, oh, it's this word. Thank you so much. Because man's been standing up here saying the wrong word. I've read it wrong about five times already. And with all of that said, I was asked back. I was asked, will you be, will you host the awards again next year? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. All I know is just next year, can we just get the script a little bit earlier? I promise. I promise. I won't tell anyone who's won. I won't say anything to anyone, but can we get that script a little bit earlier? Just so I can practice just that little bit. And I'm like, do you know what? In all honesty, I'll get that script. I won't even look at it. I won't even look at it. The questions that I have to ask the guests, I get them. I get those questions before, you know, I actually have the interviews and I don't read a single one. And until like the next interview, I'm like, oh, who am I interviewing next? Okay. Oh, that sounds like a good interview. <laughs> Do you know what it is, though? I'll tell you why. And this is something that I learned uh, maybe over the last few years. I mean, I've always not been someone who's over prepares for stuff. But what happens, what I feel happens when I over prepare is that if I over prepare something, what is going to happen is I'm going to get, okay, okay, okay. And then everything that I've prepared, I'm not actually going to go for. If I forget it, what I've prepared, and I especially if I forget the important things, I'm going to feel shit about myself. Like, oh man, I messed up because I never said this, 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 and this. So to avoid that, I just say what's in my heart. I just say what I know and what comes naturally to me. If I over-prepare, I'm going to forget something and then I'm just going to, I'm going to have a couple of days thinking I should have said this and I should have said that. No, what you should have done is you should, you should say what you know. Say what you know. Be authentic. Be real. Be vulnerable. Be, be, have the courage and the confidence to say when you don't know something. So like I can't pre-prepare for a question that someone's going to ask in question section. And I'm, there are times when people have asked me questions and I'm like, you know what? I actually don't know. I don't even know don't actually know the answer to that one but take my email or dm me and i'll have a look and i'll see what i can do and i'll see how i can help you so yeah that's been the best thing that's been the best thing i've done in my speaking journey the best thing i've done is not get caught up on on over preparing and even when i have interviews and you know when people are like oh sorry i haven't sent you the questions that's fine well we when we jump in, we jump in. Like, I don't need to know all the questions before because, again, I'm going to prepare these these articulate answers and then I'm not even going to say it because unless I'm reading from a script in front of me, I'm not going to remember what I thought when I was articulating myself and thinking that I was going to say the best thing. So, I don't know. Don't be hard on yourself. If over-preparing for you works for you and makes you feel great, do that. But if it doesn't, do not stress yourself about it and speak from the heart. Always just speak from the heart because you can't get it wrong when you speak from your heart. You're, you're just speaking what comes to you naturally. And you know what? I cannot end this interview without giving Penny and Michael the biggest virtual love hug ever. Like, if life was a Care Bear, we'd be up in the clouds together. Them not there absolutely love them. I've done a live with Penny on Tuesday and I was in tears. I broke down on that live because what I said on that live was that Penny took a chance on me and I don't even know if you want to call it a chance, but she was just like, yeah, cool. Yeah, cool. After year one, and she said, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to, I want to be a presenter. I want to do the presenting. I want to be one of the presenters on the stage. And there wasn't a stage for me. They had Richard on the demo stage and they had Georgina on the main stage. And you know what that woman done? She made a stage. She made space for a stage. Cool. We're going to build a new stage. We're going to have three stages instead of two. And it's going to be called the extra stage. But there's not many people that are going to do, that are going to see you before you even see yourself. And I feel like for me, Penny saw something in me that I wasn't even yet seeing. She was like, yeah. You, you're amazing, you can do it. And I was like, I've been telling myself I'm amazing, but now it's time to believe that you're amazing because there are people that are fucking putting you on a pedestal and then you're like, oh, I'm too high. Wait, 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 just want it. Let me just climb down to the next run. No, sit fucking high on that pedestal because they put you there because they believe in you. And now it's time for you to believe in yourself. And I'm so grateful for her for that. I'm so grateful for, for Michael because leading up to the event, 
I mean, all year round, but leading up to the event, like, he has not been nothing short of support, guidance, information, advice. Guys are fucking, um, he's amazing. He's absolutely amazing. And I, with the, when it comes to them two, like, they just feel like family. And it feels like they're people that I've known for years. And I will know them for years. And, like, I could not imagine them not in my life. Like, honestly yeah beautiful 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 souls and if you haven't had the experience or you haven't had the pleasure of having a penny and a michael in your life i feel bad for you son i got 99 problems but not having them two in my life ain't one and with that said we reached the end of the podcast thank you for listening again peace out a town down west side is the best side do i believe that i don't know not really i should maybe i should stop saying this but what i do know is wherever i'm at the vibes at and clearly the vibes where i'm at because Ask anyone who was on the extra stage with me. They said it was a vibe. (laughs) Ask my people then. They said it was a vibe. And you know what? More than anything, I said it was a vibe. And what I say goes. Because it's my platform. (laughs) Love you guys. Bye.